Welcome back everybody to the Sprinkler channel. Today we're going to be talking about nozzles and specifically for the Rainbird 5000 here is what we're looking at that comes with each sprinkler head that you buy. So just remember when you buy a Rainbird 5000 rotor head to grab the nozzle selections that come with it and then you'll be ready to go. So let's get into it. Let's talk about nozzles. So with this one, this one's called the Rainbird rain curtain. You can see right here it says rain curtain. So that's the model of there because there's a lots of different uh, nozzles out there that you can use in the different heads. So um, just remember that. And then as you can see we have two types within here. Over here we have the low angle. So what does that mean? Low angle versus just your standardized nozzles. So we have eight of the standard nozzles and then we have four of the low angle ones. Now, if you can see a little closer here, in that, in that nozzle where the port, where the water's coming out, it's angled more. So instead of being flat, these ones are sitting flat like this. So if the nozzles are like that, the nozzles for the low angles is going to be slanted downwards. So the water is going to not spray up and out so much, but it's going to be coming either more straight so that way if you're in a windy area or something that if the water sprays up high and the wind just carries away all the water and it never gets to your lawn then that's when you want to consider doing the low angle sprinkler heads now they each have numbers on them and you'll see you know starting at uh 1.0 1.5 and uh even 3.0 and, and you might be thinking okay so that's how many gallons per hour it's going to put out but that's not always the case and you'll definitely want to refer to this chart that Rainbird has that shows you the flow rates gallons per minute of how much water that specific head is going to be putting out to the lawn and there's a lot of factors that go into choosing which nozzle to put in here so for instance if you the one sprinkler head's covering uh, 180 degrees of lawn versus another one that's in the corner only doing 90 degrees you're gonna have to take that in consideration because if, if they're gonna be having the same nozzle the one in the corner is gonna be making twice as many passes because they're rotating at the same time so they're gonna be it's gonna get twice as much water unless you make those adjustments with the nozzles and that's what you want to take in consideration so for instance um, the standard nozzle um let's see where it's at the 1.5 let's this one right here that says 1.5 on it it's a standard nozzle if you have 25 psi or, or uh, pounds per square inch of pressure on your water then that's going to affect how much water is going to come out of the nozzle for instance right here 1.5 under 25 psi it's going to shoot out without without a changing the screw function of the sprinkler head 33 feet so that's the radius that it will spray 33 feet and then the flow gallons per minute is 1.12 gallons per minute and that equals when we're talking about precipitation rates because you want basically all your lawn to be getting the same precipitation rates as if you know if it was raining then you know they measure okay it rained you know and a half an inch so precipitation uh, right here for this 1.5 with 25 psi would be 0 0.20 inches an hour so if you left it on an hour it would get equivalent to 0 0.20 inches of precipitation um, and so and that's also based on you know having your sprinkler heads in a in a square format if you had a more a, a triangular format uh, when you design them, then of course that's going to increase the uh, precipitation uh, a little bit higher. So um, just refer to these charts. These are really important. So let's go on the other extreme. Let's go all the way down to say, hey, we're going to put this 8.0. We're going to put this 8.0. As you can see, it has a lot bigger gap in the opening right there. And now let's read the stats on that one so say you have lots of pressures so this would be 65 psi pressure water pressure and then you put this 8.0 nozzle on your sprinkler head on the rainbird 5000 now um, that's going to shoot 
for a distance of 48 feet radius. And that's going to give you 9.63 gallons of water per minute. 9.63 gallons per minute coming out of that one nozzle. And that equals 0.84 inches of precipitation an hour. So uh, just think about that. And that's the square format. If we go to the triangular design, uh, you know, we're all the way up to 0.97 inches an hour of precipitation. So that's a lot of water coming out of one nozzle. And it all depends on what's your pressure at the head and what nozzle are we going to be using in that head for, you know, taking consideration the design of that sprinkler, uh, sprinkler system and where the, what, how much lawn is that um, head's going to cover. Let's, let's pick one right now. We're going to do, say, the 3.0. So if we want to do the 3.0 nozzle, how we're going to do it is we're just going to break it off like this. All right, so you can see it. We're just going to break it off like this. And twist it around the burrs on it to try to deburr it so that way it doesn't impede it from sliding into the sprinkler nozzle okay and then this is how we're going to install the sprinkler nozzle so this one's the 3.0 which would give a spray radius of 36 if we had 25 psi and that's going to let 2.26 gallons per minute uh, flow out of this nozzle so 2.26 gallons per minute will flow out of this nozzle at 25 PSA. All right, so let's go ahead and use our sprinkler tool. Okay, here we are. Now we're gonna use that one spot that allows us to pull up the head. Make sure we get all the way down into there. So as you can see, you wanna make sure you get all the way down there. You're gonna to want to make sure that the screw is not down at all. Otherwise, it's gonna not allow you to get that uh, sprinkler nozzle in. So. Let's reverse that screw real quick so we can actually get our nozzle in there. And I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it like this just for video footage and trying to do it as quickly as possible. But if it was in the ground, then you have something that's gonna be pulling it down where I don't have that convenience right now. So that's why I'm just gonna take it out of the sprinkler body. And now we have that opening the screws all the way back up and now I'm going to insert that head just like that so you can see and then we'll just press it in so it might take some force you want to make sure that it's flush right there so now we have that nozzle inserted in just like that now if you don't do anything else and you leave it like that as soon as the water comes on it's going to push out that nozzle and your and the nozzle is going to be somewhere lost in your lawn so make sure before you turn on the water and after you install this, whichever nozzle you decide is the one that you need, then you need to go back up here to that screw and just, it might take a little bit, but just crank that screw down. So, and we'll just have to watch it. And so we wanna make sure that the screw is gonna go down enough to hold that nozzle in there. But right now we don't want it to block the spray until we can decide if our spray needs to be shortened, you know? So this was, we said 36 feet, but maybe uh, we only need to spray 30 feet. So then maybe we'd screw that screw down. Um, we covered that, how to adjust your sprinkler head in another video. So check that one out. But there's your install of your nozzle. Now, when you turn on the water, your head pops up. The water pressure pops up the head. Your nozzle's not gonna fly out because now we have the screw pushed down on there keeping it from falling out like it should be. So make sure it's installed correctly, make sure it's in between those sides and kind of that indention in the nozzle. And uh, just make sure that that nozzle doesn't get installed upside down or crooked or something like that. So that's how it should look. Hope that helps. Hit the like button if it did. Leave a comment if you have any other questions about how to do this or something else that you run into. And we'll try to get them answered or make another video to address them. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.